midterm is a very important subject. I'm having great difficulty to express it because there is not enough material, orthodox text on that subject, and whichever, whenever we have something in the subject, it's actually glorifying humanity, humanism, rather than the Christian concept of art and culture. Well, basically, do you hear it? Yes. Thank you. Now, the subject is this. The arts and the pastor and you will be required, your test, to answer various questions based on this text. <clears throat> there are certain points that you have to understand in order to pass. I'll warn you which are the major points. First of all is this. Arts or artistic expression of a beautiful feeling or harmonious movement in the soul of any human being from the very beginning of time was associated with religion because religion is a way to or expression of acknowledging higher powers or creator God who created the whole world harmoniously we do not know, for example, which was first, the idea of worship or music, <laughs> music or worship. The whole phenomena of um, worship is bound up with the idea of beauty. <laughs> In fact, God, according to the Holy Fathers, God is creator of truth and also beauty. Dostoevsky said, and you'll be required to know that statement, that beauty will save the world. By beauty is meant the expression of godliness in earthly terms for, in, uh, for earthly be be uh, uh, human beings in the span of time here upon this earth, as the beginning for eternity. Eternity, as far as we know, or afterlife, is bound up with beauty. This expression in human beings uh, of expressing, wanting to express beauty, harmony, and so on, is inborn in man. <coughs> According to the Holy Fathers, it stems from paradise. And it will be in full splendor after the second uh, coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore beauty today, now, in human understanding, is a hint of paradise. Is memories of the past, paradise lost, <coughs> and in anticipation of paradise to come. This beauty, <coughs> or concept of harmony, the refinement, elegance, and mm -hmm. um, truthful expression of exalted state, or devilistic state of man, this very expression <coughs> has been the main uh, element in worship, in religion. The more refined the cultures, the more refined the art, the cruder the culture, the cruder the arts. We know some primitive uh, cultures, they have all these drum beats and all that. Some of them are, <clears throat> uh, some of them is first, it's difficult for us to understand, <coughs> understand this European concept, <coughs> but it certainly <clears throat> is different between those drum beats and some kind of a violent concerto of Mozart to Tchaikovsky. We also know this, and that is important for us to know, that human soul worships God through beauty, truth, and uh, God. To human soul, it is understandable 
that is the human psychology, of human psyche, understands, feels beauty without words. It does not require <coughs> much words. When you see some kind of a beautiful painting or something beautiful, you don't need words to describe it. It's there. We apprehend it with our inner sense of um, um, you know, beauty. We don't have to need words. Same thing with music. Architectural buildings. We don't need words. We see it. We apprehend with one, say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So in other words, it is a language. Beauty is a language. A great composer, perhaps the greatest composer of all times, Johann Sebastian Bach, used instruments and tones and uh, modes in order to convey that it's used as a language. That a cello, sound of cello, has one particular message. A violin flute, it has a particular thing. So when he wants to say a certain phrase from scripture that talks about trumpet, that talks about um, exaltation or uh, rage of heaven or something, he uses instruments. And when you hear this without words, you get the point. In opera, they even use this same principle <coughs> by so called leitmotif. They use a melodic line or just few bars in order to hint a certain element. Let's say the heroine comes, and before she comes, you, you have those, those few uh, no, bars coming, some notes, and you already feel, aha, she's about to come. Her element is present. The usage, in other words, it's a language. So therefore, it is important for Orthodox Christians to realize that worshiping God involves beauty. When I, I repeat myself all the time, because I want that idea to come across. When we come to church and we pray, we are utilizing our faculties that uh, function through beauty. Poetry, for example, is <clears throat> the closest, perhaps, to all of the arts, to the soul, except for music, is when words not only words conveying a certain message, but order of them, or rhyme, or rhythm, or metaphors, or color utilized, has stronger meaning than just regular words. That's the difference between the poetry and prose. That prose is what, you know, newspapers written in the <coughs> it's prose. But poetry uses various methods uh, by changing word order or giving uh, various metaphors, they evoke a sense of beauty that somehow harmonizes with us and we see a different picture. You take some kind of a poem um, and <laughs> you read this, you, you know this, you read this, but if you trans transliterate it or uh, to, uh, translate in terms of just in this describing uh, as regular as poet, um, prosaic, you get a different idea. Poetry touches the soul. Therefore, the pastor, a Orthodox pastor, cannot be insensitive or de dead to the sense of beauty and harmony. 